All right, so I just want to go over um, the organ systems that we're going to be seeing first. We're going to use the rat as a model, right, or an example of a mammal. And the reason why we use rats is that first is a mammal. So the organ systems and the organs are actually very, very similar to ours, taking into consideration the size, of course, difference. But the organization, the shape, the location of the organ systems are all very, very similar to ours, okay? There are very few differences. The other reason why we use the rat is that it's a pretty big animal, right? So it's not a, a small mammal. These are animals that are raised to be dissected for this. And the reason why I do this, and I hate killing animals, is because I do think it's an, an extremely valuable lesson. And I know a lot of you are going health field, a lot of you are going to be in zoology or marine biology, and having this understanding of the anatomy of an animal will help you understand a lot about its physiology and how they deal with their environment. We're going to start by skinning the rat. First, take just the skin out, and I want, before we go ahead and cut through the abdominal and the thoracic cavities, I want you guys to take a look at three muscles. Okay, in this rat right here, you're seeing it, this rat skinned, but it's really not what you're going to see. It's kind of, there are two different levels. Okay, on the right of the uh, rat. Okay, so first of all, if I say right or left today, it's always the right or left of the rat, okay, of the animal you're dissecting. So on the right-hand side of the rat right here, these are more superficial muscles. And then on the left-hand side are more kind of internal muscles right below the, these here. Pretty much what you would see in our rat, we are just going to look at the superficial muscles and then one kind of little deeper muscle, but you would see kind of like a mirror image of this right-hand side, okay? So for example, the pectoral muscle, you will see that forms kind of like a V, okay? Because it kind of comes up the other side this way. Um, so we're going to look at the pectoral muscles, which when you do your pecs, that's what we're talking about, okay? It's these muscles that connect the forelimb of the animal to the sternum, okay? So it allows them to kind of move their, their forelimbs. Another thing that muscle that we're going to look at is this one that runs right in the middle of the body of the rat, and it goes very straight. So it's straight up and down like this. And this is called the rectus abdominis or your abs. Okay, so when you do your abs, that's kind of the muscles that you are working on. And they also have most of actually their belly, if you think of it, is a muscle called the external oblique. So we're going to start with those. And then we're going to cut the abdominal cavity of the rat and the thoracic cavity. And then we're going to look at the other organ systems. And the one that we're going to probably spend most time because it's the I find it the most interesting because it has so many different organs, is the digestive system. If you look here at this person, so this area where ribs are, this is your thoracic region. Inside of it is your thoracic cavity. And below that, in your belly, that's your abdominal cavity. What we are going to see is that most of the organs of the digestive system are located in the abdominal cavity. Uh, one thing I want to point out before talking about each of these organs is this muscle right here. So this muscle here is the diaphragm. It is a muscle that actually separates the thoracic cavity from the abdominal cavity. When we dissect, we're going to kind of dissect from here, from the abdominal cavity up. I will ask you guys to stop at this point and cut to the side so we can see the diaphragm intact. That kind of what helps you breathe. Let's take a look at the organs of the digestive system. So when you eat, so your first organ is the mouth, right? So that's where food starts to be digested with your saliva, with your teeth, you know, you start mechanical digestion, also chemical digestion of that food. The food from the mouth, it goes to the pharynx, which is your throat, and then it goes into the esophagus. The esophagus is the only organ of the digestive system that is in the thoracic cavity. It's kind of really hard one to see because it's kind of pretty dorsally located. Then it kind of, the esophagus goes through the diaphragm. It has a nice seal around it. And then it leads that food is going to go to, into this organ right here, which is the stomach. Okay, when you open the abdominal cavity of the rat, the first organ you're going to notice is the liver. The liver is huge, it's big, it's dark colored. Um, if you, you probably have to move it a little bit to the side to be able to see the stomach. The stomach is going to kind of continue digestion of that food. And then that material is going to go into the small intestine. The beginning of the small intestine is this kind of curve right here called the duodenum. Attached to the, this area, to the duodenum and the stomach a little bit, is this kind of yellowish structure. 
And this is an accessory organ to the digestive system called the pancreas. So the pancreas is a gland. The red, it doesn't look like an organ, okay? It almost looks like fat, okay? You're going to find all this kind of connective tissue with this dark red and some yellow structures in it, and that's the pancreas. You may not recognize at first, but in order to find the pancreas, just go to this area, okay? Go right in between the stomach and the duodenum, and then you're going to find it. What the pancreas does is kind of releases enzymes into the small intestine and helps digest food. The liver is an accessory organ to the digestive system. So meaning that food doesn't go through the liver, doesn't go through the pancreas. That's why they're called accessory, but they do help with digestion. The liver is going to produce the bile, which helps us digest kind of fat, for example. In humans, the liver produces bile and then stores it in the gallbladder. Rats don't have a gallbladder, so don't look for it. The bile is going to go directly from the liver into the small intestine. Then food goes through the small intestine. Notice how the small intestine is really long and winds in like this and super coiled inside. It's, a, it's connected together. It's all, these coils are all together. You're going to see, you could lift this whole thing here and it's all together like that. It doesn't unwind, but it's all held together by connective tissue. So you're going to notice, you're going to notice a lot of connective tissue inside of your body. When you kind of pull the skin away from the muscles, you're going to notice that uh, you're going to notice them here. You know, at some point, the lab manual asks you to actually unravel this. And in order to unravel this small intestine, you have to break through the connective tissue that holds them together. So, and the reason why the small intestine is so long is to allow enough time for your body to, and the rat's body, to absorb nutrients. Okay, so that's when absorption of nutrients is happening. So we need to maximize it. So when all the nutrients possible were absorbed, whatever is left is going to be formed into the feces. And this is going to happen in the large intestine. So right here, you see that it's the entrance of that leftover material from the small intestine into the, the large intestine. Now, notice that the small intestine doesn't go to the beginning of the, small, of the large intestine. There is this like dead end right here. In the rat, it's kind of like a huge huge bag called the cecum. The cecum is where a lot of bacteria are going to be there and they're going to help digest food. And the rat has a much larger cecum than we do. Also, the other thing that's different between humans and rat is that at the very tip of the cecum is the appendix in humans, but rats don't have an appendix. So the appendix is a vestigial structure because we don't use it. We used to be more herbivore, have a more herbivorous diet. So because of our cecum has reduced, we, we were left with this little kind of appendix right there. So now the feces are going to be formed and they go up this, the large intestine. And the large intestine has its three parts. It has the ascending colon, so it's going up. So colon is just a synonym to large intestine. Then the transverse colon goes across and then the descending colon goes down. And then it will lead to the rectum and then finally to the anus. You will be able to see all these things that I just said. So you'll be able to see the mouth, the esophagus, the stomach, the liver, the pancreas, the small intestine, the large intestine, the rectum, the anus. You'll be able to see all that. We're also going to look for organs of the respiratory system. Here is a, not a great uh, picture because it doesn't show the diaphragm. But remember, I mentioned that the diaphragm seals your thoracic cavity. So most of the organs of the respiratory system are actually in the thoracic cavity. And that seal from the diaphragm is what causes you to breathe. When you, the diaphragm contracts, it kind of pulls down and makes the thoracic cavity increase in size. And this creates negative pressure. Air is drawn into your nose, through your pharynx, goes into the larynx, uh, which is your voice box, and then it goes through this tube called the trachea. The trachea is a really nice organ for you to see in a dissection because it's very easy to recognize because it has these cartilaginous rings. So look for a tube in this area here that has these horizontal rings on it and you know you found the trachea. At the level of the lungs, the trachea is split into two tubes called the bronchi. We are not going to be able to see the bronchi. So pretty much we're going to see the trachea and then we're going to see the lungs. Okay, the right lung and the left lung. So again, remember right of the animal, left of the animal. But whenever we have organs that there are two, there is a right and a left. If I ever ask you to identify it, okay, in a quiz or in an exam, you have to say right lung, left lung. Also, we are going to be able to see the excretory system 
So the main organs of the excretory system are the kidneys, and the kidneys are located dorsally, really, like they are attached to the dorsal wall of the rat. Okay, so you have to move the intestines a little out of the way in order to find the kidneys. They're these bean-shaped structures, so very easy to recognize because of that. They filter the blood from water-soluble toxins. And then that filtrate, which is the urine pretty much, is going to be led to this storage area, which is the bladder, through this fine little tubes, ureters. Again, there's a right and a left, there's a right kidney and a left kidney, a right ureter uh, and a left ureter. And these ureters are going to lead the urine to the bladder. I know most people think, okay, I'm going to find a little balloon there, but it does not look like a balloon at all in the rat. Okay, most of these rats have an empty bladder. So it's very small. And then from the bladder, the urine gets released through the urethra. The organs of the male rat are very similar to a male human. This is showing the organs like in a person in this position. So you're seeing this person on the side. And then if you would make a longitudinal section of the area, that's what you're seeing there. The gonads, which are the testes, are located in the scrotum, this bag of skin that hangs below the body of the male. And the reason why it's outside of the body is that sperm is extremely sensitive to temperature. And the temperature of our body is a little too hot for that. By being outside of the body, it decreases the temperature just by a couple of degrees, which is enough for the production of sperm. So sperm is being produced in this little cooler area, okay? This is the test is right here, is white. When you do your dissection, if you have a male, you will have to cut through the scrotum, get some connective tissue out until you expose the testes. The testes should look pretty white, uh, and then you know you got it. Surrounding the testes, uh, there is this organ called the epididymis. The epididymis is where the sperm gets stored. So it gets produced in the testes, it gets stored in the epididymis until ejaculation. And then during ejaculation, all the sperm is going to get out of the epididymis and go through this tube right here, which is a very thick tube, very easy to see, called the vas deferens. You might have heard the term vasectomy, severing the vas deferens. So the vas deferens is going to bring the sperm to the penis. And along the way, the semen is going to be formed. And the semen is pretty much a fluid that is going to have energy for the sperm. So it's going to be able to nurture that sperm through its trip, you know, all the way to the vagina. And it's going to also have fluids that are going to help clear the urethra. So it will pass back up of glands. One of the glands is a pair of glands right here. Very easy to recognize when you dissect the rat. These are called the seminal vesicles. Seminal because it's producing semen. And then it's also going to pass by the prostate gland right here. And there's a third gland, which is harder to see, a bulbo urethral gland that's also going to help build that semen. Then all that semen with the sperm is going to go through the urethra through the penis, so the penis right here and out. The only difference really between the human and the rat male reproductive system is that the penis of the rat is not always out. It's actually inside of the body of the animal until copulation, and then it kind of comes out. And then the female, so I'm showing here a human female reproductive system, so you guys understand the organs, but the rat looks more different than in males. Here you would be seeing like a woman or her reproductive system as if she were facing you. Right in the middle here is the uterus. And then on either side of the uterus, you see this kind of long tube. We call this a general name is the oviduct, or we call it the fallopian tubes. At the tip of those fallopian tubes, you see the ovaries. The ovaries are the gonads. So this is where egg is being produced during puberty. The egg is going to be released once a month, okay, into this tube and go through the oviduct. If this egg is going to be fertilized, fertilization is going to happen right here in the fallopian tube or the oviduct. And then that uh, zygote is going to move to the uterus, implant itself in the wall of the uterus, and that's where pregnancy should continue. Leading to the outside is this tube called the vagina. Okay, so notice that this is a human reproductive system. The rat's female reproductive system is different. It has a similar shape. So if you look in this diagram on the left, I'm putting this in relation to the excretory system because you can find the bladder, which is here, you know that right behind it is the vagina. Notice that the vagina splits into these two other tubes. They look like tubes. 
And these are the uteri. We call this the uterine horn. Okay, these guys here are not fallopian tubes, which would give you the impression because of our human reproductive system. Instead, each arm of this V is a uterus. So the plural is uteri. At the tip of each of these uteri, you find like a little coiled tube, very, very fine, which is the oviduct. And then at the tip of the oviduct, the ovary. Now, all this here at the tip, all this, even like along the uterus, is surrounded by fatty tissue. So you have to dig into that fatty tissue to recognize it. Let's see how it looks in the rat. Let me show you what a urinary bladder looks like. It looks like this tiny little white thing right there. See? So that's what you're looking for. Right behind it is the vagina. You can't see in this picture. And then the vagina splits into these kind of tubes here. Each of these is a uterus. Notice that all this white thing along the uterus and going all the way here, these are all fat. And this fatty tissue will help nourish the fetuses. By having two uteri allows these animals to have many, many, many offspring at once. If you follow the uterus all the way to the tip, you find the oviduct and then the ovary. First thing, um, I hope, so I would like you all to have your lab manuals or lab handouts with you. And what I'm going to do is we have plenty of rats, one, two, three, four, five, six, besides mine. I'm going to kind of give you an overview of what to do. And then I break you guys into those breakout rooms. You dissect that part that I ask you to do. And then you, as soon as you're done, you all come back, show me what you found out. And then I'll say, okay, good. You guys figure them out. Go back to your room and now go look at the thoracic cavity. The first thing I want you guys to do is to show well your rats and let's figure out their sexes. So I don't know if you guys can see here. I have a male rat in my hand and look at the, the scrotal sac here. And if you look at a female rat, there is no scrotum there. So can you guys tell me what you have? So who has male? Let's see. I do. And do Yasmin? You know? Yes. Okay, so you have a male. Who else has a male? I do. This is Shane. The only Yasmin and Shane. Heather, do you have a male? No, I have a female. Ryan, did you figure out yours? It's a, ma it's a female, right? Okay, so we have two males. And then, okay, that's good. I have this is Teresa. I have a female also. Okay, so everybody else has a female. So I want when you guys get together, before you start dissecting, I want you guys to look at the parts of the rat. Identify what is anterior, what is posterior, what is dorsal, what is ventral, okay. and you're going to follow the handout for that. I'll let you guys do this on your own because it's just looking at the diagram and really recognize. And then once you have recognized that, you're going to look at the external features of the rat. Notice the pelage, which is the, pretty much the fur. Notice the whiskers, which we call vibrissae. Everything is in bold. You guys have to identify. So I want everybody to have this handout, be it on the computer or in your hand, even if you don't have a rat. And then once you have identified those parts of the external feature, you're going to dissect the rat. Let's take a look at your tools. So you should have... Uh, two pairs of scissors. One of them is sharp on both sides. Another pair of scissors that has a blunt side and a sharp side, and that's where you're going to use the most. So you want this kind of handy. You will need the pins, <laughs> tweezers, or forceps. And then you have two probes. I like the straight probe. So it helps you kind of move things out of the way, point at things. So put these kind of on the side of your tray. What we are going to have to do is first, you're going to have to pin this rat down. And let me tell you, I know this is kind of uncomfortable and bad for some of you, but if you ask for a rat and you're dissecting a rat in your house, I'm sure you can do it. <laughs> they, they get pretty stiff when they get preserved. So you may need to break their arms. I'm sorry. So you want to kind of open it up. I had a hard time pinning because this tray is super thin. I don't know if you guys will be able to, so I'm not going to pin mine down. Next thing you're going to do, you're going to cut the skin. So that's the edge. And then you're going to put the blunt side of your scissors in that cut and you're going to make a superficial cut. Now, you're not trying to cut through the cavity. You just want the skin. One way to do is like to hold your scissors sideways a little bit. You're going to notice that the skin is very tight, you know, tightly secured to the muscles below it. So you're going to lift it and you're going to use your scissors closed and try to separate the skin from the muscle as you go. 
Can we go above the penis or below? Go above the penis for now, but you will need to go below it later. Okay. So notice that I'm lifting the skin and then I kind of keep cutting. Access to this handout, I posted it, even if you didn't get a rat. And right here shows some cuts. Right now, you're doing number one, which is this red line right here. I want you to go number one and four now, but just to skin the rat, okay? So you're going to cut this all the way to the neck, and then you're going to break the connective tissue as I have been doing by closing the scissors and then separating the skin from the muscles below it. And I want you to do this all the way to the neck there. And then you cut to the sides and to the sides down here and you open, which would be numbers two and five pretty much, just the skin. And then you open it up and I want you to follow the lab manual and I want you to identify those four muscles that I showed you in the PowerPoint. Guys, I see that you're all dissecting the rat already. But remember, before you continue the dissection, I want you in groups to together to figure out what is the anterior, posterior, dorsal. Look at the external features before you cut this rat. And then skin the rat, expose those muscles, and identify them. So the muscles are listed in your lab manual. They're the pectoral, the rectus abdominis, and the oblique muscles. So I'm going to put you guys into your rooms, and I'll see you when you find these muscles. Okay, you come back to me, all right, and then show them to me. And you can call me if you have any questions. Nice, nice Shane. Uh, nice skinning there going on. Uh, yes, me. Good job. You may want to now. You may want to kind of cut these. Um, yes, me. So maybe you want to cut your your red, the skin kind of more this way so you can open better. So just make a horizontal cut. Nice, yeah, that way, good. I do that on the bottom, yeah, on the bottom. Yeah, do on the bottom and the top, it's kind of like a book. I notice you can pin it down if you put it really sideways into it. Yeah, that's kind of what I did, but still it keeps coming out. My yeah. tail keeps like curving in. <laughs> I mean, we're not going to do much with the tail if you want to cut it off. <laughs> oh. Except you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put you guys back into the groups. The people who are not dissecting should be telling the person who is dissecting what to do by reading the lab manual. And you guys should have your atlases and the diagram that I posted ready to identify those parts. Yeah, do you want us to start cutting into the muscle and No. At no. Oh wait, which muscle? The the internal oblique or or cutting in to see the cavity? Cutting okay. in to see the cavity. Okay, no, not yet. My group we saw and talk, uh, talked about, like, the different muscle groups that we could see. We got it skinned fairly oh, Okay, well. so your group was able to. How about the other groups? Uh, could you point to where the – it says they appear to form the letter V, what we're supposed yeah. to be seeing. Internal oblique. Oh, the internal oblique. Okay, so let me go over. Can you guys see my red right here? Okay, so right here, let me bring it closer. Okay, so right here is the pectoral, which is, should be an easy one to see. Uh, my camera is still kind of crazy. So you see, it kind of has a V-shape. It mm -hmm. kind of connects the four limbs to the, to the sternum, right, which is uh, this bone right here of the rib cage. Uh, then you probably easily saw then the the rectus abdominis right in the middle, and then the external black, the fibers run this way. So I made a little V here. Look, that's what you're supposed to do. Do you see here like a, a little flap? So I kind of cut just the top muscles to reveal the muscles below it. And that's kind of what you're supposed to do. Look, it was a flap that was cut this way. It's like a little window that you do. And then you can see the internal oblique muscles right below it. And then when you do, I don't know if people who are not dissecting will be able to see right through the video, but, but see that the fibers in the muscle below, they run different, in a different direction from the external oblique. Teresa, how are you doing there? Were you able to get to the muscles? Yeah, I got to the muscles, but where's the V you're supposed to cut? The V, okay, so you can cut anywhere. So here is where I did mine. So if you look here, I made a cut, like a, okay. like a little square, and then I kind of just oh, lifted okay. a flap. You see, it has to be superficial okay. so you don't cut through the muscle. I'm going to show you guys what to do next, and then I will give you time to work in groups. And I do want people who don't have a rat to be actively participating. Lindsay, Charlie, Jan, Sam, John, 
and Sierra, you guys are going to have the lab handout in hand or in the computer, and you're going to guide the person who is dissecting by reading what they have to do and when. What you're going to follow now, it's a number four that says dissection instructions. You're going to follow this. I want you guys to do number four and five, and then come back to me once you have identified the digestive system organs. Yeah, sounds good. So let me show you what you're going to do. People with the rats, take a good look at me right now. I want you guys to feel the abdominal cavity. It's nice and soft be gentle, and then feel the thoracic cavity. It should be obvious the difference between the thoracic cavity, which is has the rib cage, and the abdominal cavity, which doesn't have any bones in there. You're going to make a, don't cut yet, okay, just pay attention. You're going to make this cut this way first, and then using the blunt side of the scissors down, you're going to go through and cut those muscles. Just pay attention to me. Don't do it, okay? Okay, you're going to go all the way to close to the sternum, close to the rib cage, okay? Don't cut through that. And then what I want you to do is this. I want you to cut to the side as close to the rib cage as you can. I want you to take a look at the diaphragm intact. You're going to open the bottom here. And then I want you to, uh, and then I want you to show everybody, I don't know if you guys can see, but I want you to see and show the diaphragm, okay? The diaphragm completely seals the thoracic cavity, and I want you guys to take a good look at it before you move on to opening the thoracic cavity. See how you guys can't not see anything? And the reason why you can't see anything is that there is a dark brown muscle there. That's the diaphragm. Once you have seen the diaphragm, you are going to cut through the thoracic cavity and you have to cut through that sternum there. It's a little tougher. And then open it to the side. Try to cut the diaphragm in a way that you keep it as intact as possible. Cut it like along the wall of the thoracic cavity. And then you open that to the side to expose the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. And then you're going to look for the digestive system organs. And you guys come back to me once you have identified all the organs that are in bold in number five of your lab manual. Have fun. Hi guys, I'm here to check in on you guys. How is everything going? Pretty good. Valentina, can you read for Ryan from the lab manual so he knows what to do? Yeah. I don't know it, if you were there when I gave the, the direction. Is it the rat dissection guide? The guide in the lab manual. All right, so now we just continue on up. Now, yeah, cut through the midline of the sternum. Yeah until you get to the neck. Hi guys, it's me. Hi. I'm here Hi. So everything okay? Do you guys have any questions? Uh, not yet. No. Not yet? Okay. All right, so I'll come back later, or if not, you just come after you identified all the organs and bold of the digestive system, okay? Okay. 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 Thank you. Did you ask for my help? Yes. Uh, you wanted us to start on step five, right? Correct. Four and five. And then once you're done identifying all the organs in bold there in number five, then you come back and show them to me. All right. Okay. See you later then. Bye. Thank you. Hi, guys. I'm here to check in and see Hi. if you guys are okay. Yeah. We're just going through. I cut the this cavity. We see the heart right here. Where would the diaphragm be? If you look at the lower part where the rib cage was, that mm -hmm. flap going horizontally yeah. is the diaphragm. Okay. But now your job now is to go through number five, which is identifying the organs of the digestive system. Okay. Jen and Sabrine can read for you one of them. Uh, Jen, right, that I assigned to read. Mm -hmm. Sabrine, make sure you have the charts, mm -hmm. and then you all work together in identifying this. So if you have any trouble, call me. <coughs> Hi, guys. It's me. It's I'm very here. difficult just to look So you okay? <laughs> I think uh, so. Yeah, she's just work, working her way through the opening the thoracic cavity. Uh-huh. Now focus on the abdominal cavity. So try to identify those in the abdominal cavity. All right. So, so we're doing like, like the digestive system. So liver, spleen, yeah. stomach, all that. Correct. Okay. So go yeah. over things that are in bold, identify sure. them, and then come back. Okay. Okay. okay, so we saw the stomach, spleen, large intestine. The rectum is... Um, Oh, it should be on the end of the large intestine. Yeah, that's what I'm looking at. Hi, guys. It's me. Hey, I'm here. Hi. Yeah, I think we're doing good. We got, like, you know, the liver, the 
the stomach. Can Sierra, yeah. can you see Sierra? No. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I can see you. Okay, great. We're just working on the large intestine parts. So those parts are kind of smaller. So they're a little harder to see, but we're, we're rearranging. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Good luck, guys. So thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, so large intestine kind of reeking to the rectum. Mm -hmm. And then we have to I think everybody's here now. Okay. Can you please show the male reproductive system? Okay. So All right, here, everybody who had a female, if you haven't seen this, please pay attention. Here is the um, scrotum. This is here. The skin. Mm -hmm. Right here is the testes. And then this right here is the epidymis, which wraps around. If you flip it, you can see it. it's like a, um, it wraps around. It's like a tube that goes up. Then um, we have, this is the penis right here. Wait, hold on. Uh, show the vas deferens coming out of the epididymis, oh, okay. Yasmin, please. The vas deferens is kind of... Oh, Yasmin, if you look at the dorsal side of the test, okay. yeah, there, there you found yeah. it. Okay, good. Okay. And then um, this is the penis right here. Behind the penis, if I lift it, these two little um, white structures are the prostate glands. And then this um, right here is the bladder in between them. And then here we have the um, seminal vesicles. Right there. Perfect. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So for everybody, so we're, it's already 6.15. Make sure for people who didn't have a rat in their hands, I highly recommend maybe looking at pictures of dissected rats, making sure that you can identify all these organs that we talked about today. Make sure that you know the organs of the reproductive system of males and females, okay, independent of whatever rat you had. So do you guys enjoy it? Oh, that was so fun. Yeah. yeah it was, I'm going to remember that. It was a little bit challenging making sure people can see what you can see. Yeah, I wish I had a better webcam. Yeah. I agree, but you guys did a great job. I agree, because I was having the same problem here, especially with my camera being crazy. But yeah, but the setup, I think, is the hardest thing. And and now I realize that it's also late. It's so dark. It's getting so dark here in my house. Um, but you guys did a great job showing and sharing. And, and I want to really thank you guys who got a rat and who dissected it and put all the setup for your camera so everybody can can see it and that you shared with with your partners and your groups thank you this was fun i mean that I, was yeah. a lot of fun. <laughs> thanks professor yes, thank, thank you guys you. all right so um for people with the rats um play with it more <laughs> as much as you want when you're done you can put it back put it well if you throw away the bag forget it but um just throw in the trash um normal trash is fine wash well your hands get rid of this tray uh wash well your tools and make sure you dry them well so they don't get rusty now you guys have a, a nice little dissection set all right guys so have a great week end of week